So here we are sitting on our little planet, about four planets from the sun, in a smallish little solar system, in an insignificant place, in a quite a cool galaxy. The next galaxy closest to us is thousands of light years, hundreds of thousands of light years away. And that's the next galaxy, and these things just go on and on and on. And these things started ostensibly by a big bang, like a singularity of a black hole, and all the matter was compressed into an infinitesimal size and infinite volume, uh, infinite density. It's no volume, infinite density, right? So that we presume infinite mass. And these forces, we know from Newton's laws, that all these particles, the force between two bodies is proportional to the product of their masses, the inverse square of the distance between them, so they get closer together and they get heavier, the force increases. So these things imploded, forming a singularity in the center of a black hole. Bang! All of a sudden, 13.87 billion years ago, for no reason, wah, all this thing explodes, pieces of matter fly off into space, most of it in molecular gas, it starts coming together, coagulating, whatever you want to call it, really care, but form starts, molecular gas starts forming. Our galaxies and our solar systems, our stars, our planets and the whole Khadunta, over billions of years, okay? And this is just all random, just like boom, it happened. I mean, and then of course, there's this whole story of God. You get people that say religion. And then if you don't believe in Christianity or any of the religions, then you're a healer. And then of course, you've got the pagans, the pagans that turn around and believe in the earth and stuff. And everyone's got facets of what God is, but doesn't put it together. What is God actually? What is the universe? I think the universe consists of four pieces. We know it consists of matter. We know it consists of energy. We know, or I believe, there's a consciousness. I believe the consciousness that defines the unfolding of the universe. And I believe there is spirit. Where the spirit is more a conscience as opposed to consciousness. The consciousness defines emotion. The spirit would define if that motion is justified or needed or not. So, what am I? Is this not what God is? Well, let's think about what God is. In the Christian faith, and we hear, well, first of all, from the Judaic faith, which is where Christian faith came from and Islam came from, they believe the name of God cannot be mentioned, Yahweh. It cannot be spelled, it cannot be spoken. You should not even try and visualize God. You cannot. It's all encompassing, it's eternal, and it's beyond definition or he's beyond limitations. Only a couple of hundred years ago, actually, do we start creating these entities, a Renaissance kind of vision of God holding out his hand to, to um, Adam. And that became our picture, this guy with a long beard and things. So now what do we do? We picture him almost like a hologram, right? Floating around in space. Well, the universe is about 300 billion light years across or more, okay? So now, if he, God was on the one side of the universe as just this person, right? And there was a problem on the other side. Well, maybe he can travel fast than the speed of light. I mean, he's a God, right? He made the laws up in the first place, and he was a God. So now he gets up and shot, sh shoots across there. Man, by the time he gets there, the problem will be solved. So God cannot be a deity, and he's not just sitting looking down at earth. We can't. You can't say we've got a God that defines this side of space and orchestrates the rule in this. And in another place it's not. And so some places have got gods, some don't have gods. Now we've got gods of galaxies. We've got different gods of different strengths and, and uh, uh, attributes of speed and thought and love and all this. Make for. <sighs> Would God be watching us and building a universe and defining the laws of good and bad, only according to humanity. Does that make sense? Would he be, have to, we say, we say he is undefined, so that means he's got no shape, he's got no mass, even according to the text. He's got no volume, he's all, all over, he's omnipresent. How does that correlate with this vision 
of something in an anthropomorphic form, in a human form, or an animal form, a deity form. But you wouldn't be able to control, it wouldn't be able to control space, it wouldn't be able to control the universe and not come up with the magnificence that the universe reveals. So I think God is bigger. I see God as being the spirit and the consciousness of the universe, where matter and dark matter and uh, uh, energy and dark energy are the components, the material components of the universe. Although if you have a look at dark matter and dark energy, to me they reflect God-like attributes. They can turn around, they impact on the universe around them, but we cannot see how. We cannot see they don't have the force, they shouldn't have the energy, they shouldn't have the mass, they, everything is wrong from a physical point of view. But they impact and that's why they're called dark. Maybe they should be called light matter and light energy, who knows. But uh, we, we can't even see these things and yet we are trying to visualize God. Surely we should look at what he does and let's talk about that. I mean, all religions stopped about a thousand years ago, well, 1600 years ago, 400, 500 years ago, actually. But I mean, the mainstream stopped with birth and death of Christ from the Christian faith. Judaism has been around for about four and a half thousand years and Islam since, 16, uh, since 1000 AD. So they're pretty new, uh, Sikhism about 1600. And, uh, and then, of course, you've got the cults and all of these things. But everyone is sitting up and coming up with their rules that govern man. Surely the perspective should be a third person perspective from beyond God to looking at God and the impact that he has on the universe and not trying to define him by shape or by a dogma or constraining. We are taking and repackaging the creator into structures and, and rituals that are materialistic without asking people to think deeper. In fact, we're told don't think deeper. The church is saying, no, don't, don't question this shit. You're going to go, God will freak out. As I say, I don't think God's insecure. I really don't. But I don't think he says if you question, he turn around or the universe would turn around to you and say, oh, that was wrong. You can't do that stuff. I think the universe embraces us because of the way we tie up to the universe, and which I think is through neutrino base belts actually, because neutrinos are coming and feeding us all the time. They're going right through us, through the earth, through matter. Trillions. So it's almost like this big in, invisible matrix that taps us in or integrates with us, but we don't know how. But doesn't it make sense that tying up that matrix is the way that we actually link into the universe? That that is what feeds us and we feed the energy with our energy and our visions. So when we visualize negative, we're feeding negative energy into the universe. And we think positively and visualize, we're creating the universe, we're helping the universe unfold. We are an element of the universe. So when we die, our energy will be absorbed back into the consciousness of the universe. And our matter, our atoms and all this nonsense, will decay and form, become organic and feed the universe on a positive way from a material side. So the whole system is integrated, but I do not believe it is seen as this divine magic act. It is much more magnificent. Join me again. I'll be speaking more about this later. Ciao.